Kicking off the sports bank zone with football. The second round of fixtures in the CONCACAF Nations League concluded on Tuesday. These are the results. Cuba 1-0 over Suriname, Jamaica and Haiti 2-2 and a big win for Honduras 4-0 over Grenada. That was in League A. In League B, French Guiana losing to Belize by two goals to Nelson. Vincent to the Grenadines 4-3 over Bermuda. Guyana edging Bahamas by three goals to two. Puerto Rico 5-0 over Antigua and Barbuda. And in League C, Dominica getting a win 3-0 over Turks and Caicos. One of the more exciting games took place at the National Stadium in Kingston, Jamaica, where the Reggae Boys rallied from two goals down to earn a 2 all draw against Haiti. Their captain, Andre Blake, praised the character shown by the team. Yeah, I mean, I think we start tonight much faster than we did um, in the last game, which is definitely an improvement, you know. Um, I think we played the way we trained for the most part, we executed the game plan. But as Coach said, you know, um, it happens, you know, um, two unforced errors that kind of led to their goals. But, you know, this is football, it happens and it's how you react. And I think, you know, the boys showed a lot of character, you know, 2-0 down, it's never easy to come back against a very good team, you know, so um, credit to the boys for really sticking together, supporting each other and, and fighting through, through the situation, you know, we didn't win, but we definitely built some character where as a, as a very good team, you're going to want to have moments like these to show that you can come back from two goals down. Yeah, well said, Andre Blake. Meanwhile, head coach Hemir Hel Grimson says individual errors let them down. I think, in my opinion, it was no issue with the team. It was just two errors, and we conceded two. They had two attacks and scored in both their attacks. So I, I don't felt, I didn't feel in the game that there was something going wrong. Absolutely not. I really felt that we were playing well when we conceded the goals. Uh, and like I, I said before, after the game, last game. Uh, I, th I think today we would play with more aggressivity or aggre we played with more aggression uh, in defense. We, we met them, we knew this, this one was going to be a, a physical match and we met them there so we did not give them any, any energy going down or losing fight. So we, we stood our ground and I like that. We played in a high tempo like that as well and there we, can, we should build on this performance in my opinion. Yeah, aggressivity is always important in this thing. Joining us is our in-house football analyst, Leje Williams, who covered last night's encounter at the National Stadium. Um, Leje, in agreement with what Coach Hal Grimson had to say? Yeah, 100%. I think Jamaica played really well. And it's just ironic because I think we played, or Jamaica played worse during the 1-0 win over Honduras. And then they came, they played significantly better against against Haiti last night, but because Jamaica didn't get the win, people are then saying that a lot of negative things towards the team, when in actuality Jamaica played much better in an attacking sense. Defensively, the rest defense was really good in my opinion, but two individual errors as both the captain Andre Blake said, and of course coach Hal Grimson is what led to Jamaica's undoing. So. I do think that there's a lot of positives to take from the performance and I think the coach did a really good job explaining it. Whether or not people accept that explanation is a different thing. Yeah, break down the two goals that the Jamaicans conceded for us, um, both coming within 15 minutes of the contest. Yeah, well, I mentioned the rest defence being really good, but rest defence comes with being open and that's what happened in both instances. It was came the, it, when you're defending, when you're playing attacking football, you have to have a lot of players upfield, right? And then that's going to leave your defenders isolated, and that's what happened. And in both instances, we saw that Damien Lowe was an isolated defender. He served as a press trigger for a lot of the game, and Jamaica just couldn't handle those situations. And it was really one Haitian player causing all of the damage, and he got both of the goals. And eventually, Jamaica started to stem that threat by switching over the defensive structure to really go over that right-hand side. And eventually, the threat was stemmed. And 
yeah, I think Jamaica reacted really well, but those are individual errors. It's not something that you can account for in football. It's going to happen. Not all the time it's going to result in a goal, but if a team gets four or three chances and scores two, you can't say that your defense had a bad game when they just made a couple of errors. And as Coach Hal Grimson mentioned in the press conference, errors always look worse when it's a defender or a goalkeeper who does it. If a midfielder tries to play a forward pass and it doesn't get to the striker, that's a mistake. But just because the defender does it and it obviously leads to a goal that's more pivotal towards it, it's always going to look worse on the team. It looked worse on Jamaica, but in my opinion, I think Jamaica played really well and a lot of the noise coming out of the game, I think, is a bit reactionary and I think everyone just needs to slow their roll, calm down and continue to build with the team because there's a lot to be positive about. Yeah, the second goal, um, the commentator on the night, Chris Taylor, um, made a comment about Javain Brown um, giving too much room um, to the Haitian attacker, well, where the assist came from, um, at least. Your thoughts? I agree, but there's something to be said. At the end of the day, in sport, in life, it's a psychological thing. They know that he knew that the defender had, the, the attacker had the pace on him. He was a very skillful winger as well. So when you're dealing with a winger like that and you know you don't have the pace necessarily or the, the strength to deal with them, you give them a little space. That's something that defenders do all the time. And yes, maybe he should have been tighter. But in terms of the midfield, I think he was waiting on the midfield to recover. I was out there with the cutback, Javain Brown. Yes, if he went to him, he would have forced a quicker pass. But if he also, if he went to him, he would have made the attacker's decision much easier. He could have taken him line. He could have beaten Javain Brown on the inside and taken a shot himself. So I think it's, it's harsh in some instances. Yes, the right thing to do, maybe defensively, is to always be aggressive and attack, but at the end of the day, the defender has a split second to make a decision. You can say that he maybe didn't make the right one, but in that situation, it was very hard to prevent a goal. Yeah. Uh, Lija, I hear you um, calling for the fans to be more patient, and uh, there was some misery in the stands last night, some frustration with uh, some things that weren't working right, um, which, to the optics, you, you have to say that there are concerns. From the, on the front end, there were players just didn't look sharp. And I think that is where some of the criticism is coming from the fans. Your thoughts? Yeah, but that's something that the coach mentioned um, previously because he mentioned that Hal Grimson, that um, Shamar Nicholson rather, came in late, wasn't training up until a day before the first game. Demar Gray hasn't been training with our club, so he had to be taken off. There were a lot of moans and groans when Jamaica took him off in the 65th minute or so for Dujan Richards because Demarger is a supremely talented player, but at the end of the day, if you're not fit enough to go on and impact the game how you want to, it's not going to affect the team positively if you can't track back defensively, if you can't do what you usually do in an attacking sense. So I, I see why people would be critical of the team because he didn't get the result, but in terms of the big problem I saw in the first game against Honduras, the midfield, the movement in this game for Jamaica was so much better. Um, either one of the midfielders in Latibo there or Casey Palmer to any of their deficiencies. I'm not saying that they're the perfect midfielders for this system or for any system rather, but they, I think they did their job tactically. Jamaica did a really good job of closing down what Haiti wanted to do. They're usually a really good pressing team. They're usually good playing out. They didn't have many opportunities to do so. So I, I can't say that anything tactically was wrong in this game. Errors happen, that's what caused the goals, and I think Jamaica did really well to react, react to that. Yeah, you mentioned Shamar Nicholson just now, and the fact that he may not be in peak fitness, but uh, there, is, there is concern about his development since he um, got his overseas contract about four or five years ago, um, that he has, even before now, in his international appearances that we've seen, he hasn't looked the player that people think he may have been at this stage of his career, based on what we had seen when he was 2021. 20, That's also a fair assessment, but yes. I think in terms of international football, there's always a, a small window for players to impress because you only play two, three games for the window as opposed to a club where you're more familiar with your surroundings. Mm -hmm. So that can be said for a lot of the national players. People are saying the same or are saying the same about Leon Bailey, for example. But, but, but before you even get to Leon Bailey, though, yeah. I, I want to stick with this Shamar Nicholson. Yeah. And I understand your point about a small window to impress. Yeah. But in my opinion, I've had issues with um, Shamar Nicholson and specifically his finishing, because that's what he's in the team to do, to score goals. 
And I've looked back from the World Cup campaign under Theodore Tapo Whitmore, where I thought he missed a number of opportunities. You think about, for example, that Costa Rica game away. You think about the Gold Cup um, this summer. Uh, when he came on, I think it was against Trinidad and Tobago that he had opportunities and just could not put them away. So this is not over a short period. This is not just two or three games. This has been over two or three, or maybe even as Lance pointed out, four or five years. Well, you, you see, Ricardo, it depends how you look on football. Because, sure. yes, I'll give you the Trinidad game, I'll give you even the St. Kitts game in the Gold Cup where he came on and he was missing chances. It was the St. Kitts game, yes. But... Mm -hmm. In my opinion, when it comes down to anything in life, especially football, prevention is always better than the cure. And I say that to say this. Yes. Jamaica is not a team that creates a host of chances. So when a chance, when one chance or two chances falls to Shamar Nicholson in any game and he doesn't take them, yes. that's, and he misses them, right? Mm -hmm. Erling Haaland missed the most big chances in the Premier League, but he just happened to have, instead of getting one or two chances, he happened to get five or six and he scores three goals instead. Jamaica, if Jamaica is not creating chances or enough chances, just like how when Bobby Reed missed a chance against USA, it's a big chance, yes. yes. But the real issue or the real issue has been a lack of creating chances under previous regimes. I doubt we would have gotten back or Jamaica would have gotten back into the game last night because we wouldn't have been creating enough chances. Yes. I specifically asked um, Coach Hal Grimson about, because he mentioned before that the attack wasn't clicking. But last night we saw constantly all five lanes occupied, the attack was clicking, there was always players running into the box for crosses. So I think Jamaica has improved significantly in terms of their attacking play. And even last night, Shamar Nicholson only had one or two half chances. So yes, I understand that he is missing chances. But as I said, mistakes always look good or always look worse when you're in the front line, meaning on either box. Are you, you Mitch, I don't want to be harping on Shamar Nicholson because he's a player I like, um, but you mentioned small windows to impress. I got the impression that he was not getting as much playing time at Spartak Moscow in the latter part of his sojourn there as he did earlier on. No, he has gone to Clermont in France. Mm -hmm. uh, but I got the impression that he, he was getting less playing time in, in, in the Russian league for Spartak Moscow in the last part of his campaign there, which suggests to me that maybe he wasn't doing as well as, as the coach wanted. There's a, there's a lot of issues. There's a lot of stuff behind that as well. It doesn't have to be only his play. And mm -hmm. also, I would like to I say... I don't know. I'm just so, asking. So, so let yes. me ask you this, Leger. <laughs> Are you okay with what Shamar Nicholson has produced for Jamaica in the last three to four years? I think he needs to do better, Yes. But that's, that's what, that's what no. we're saying. No, by the way, I think no. you make a fair point, um, mm. what, you, what you said earlier, mm. in relation to the team creating enough chances, especially under the previous regime and the previous regime being um, that of coach Theodore Whitmore. Of course, Theodore Whitmore will say, well, I had to play that way because of what I had to work with. Um, mm. You look at this setup and you have... I would think, better quality attackers. Um, but take someone like a Demarai Gray, for example. Quality player. He's come in. He's gone, what, three goals in seven matches. Didn't score last night. But it was his play that led to the opening goal. Um, Demarai Gray is operating in, in a similar system. He is getting limited opportunities as well. But when he gets his opportunities, he tends to put them away, which is what we've not been seeing from Nicholson. We can expect the same things that from the Margaret they expect from Shamar Nicholson. I the can't. Man. No, but based on what Lance pointed out, when, when Shamar Nicholson just burst onto the national team, I remember him scoring a spectacular goal. I think it was in the Gold Cup as well. Um, not this last one. The, the um, one a before, few yeah, Gold I Cups ago. Against Suriname, I believe. Yeah. Yes, fantastic goal from distance. And I remember at that time, person saying, yes, this is the man to take us forward. Um, but I just want you to accept that he has not been as good as we expected him to be when he came into this national setup. I agree with you. Okay, good. I, I Leon agree. Bailey then, because we're running out of time. <laughs> I, 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 I think at times, Leon Bailey, I, I think sometimes he tries a bit too hard mm. to impress because there is pressure on him. 
So I think he tries a bit too hard to impress at times that, so his football isn't quite as free-flowing for Jamaica as it has been at times for Aston Villa and in the past for Leverkusen. So I, I think there are issues there. I'm not going to say that Leon Bailey or Shamar Nicholson or any other player has been perfect. But what I'm saying is the outright negativity around the team I think is unwarranted. We are a significantly better team if you look at any metric. Yes, people are going to say we only drew the game. That's not a game that Jamaica would go on to win under any other regime. Would I, I heard that two, when I was in the crowd at Tunuk, I sat over the bleachers nice. to get a real vibe of the place, you know? <laughs> so when I was in the bleachers, usually if I'm in the bleachers, Jamaica got 2-0 go, down. People are leaving. Yes. I'm hearing people say anything about Tapa, things that I would not like to repeat. Yes. But last night... When certain people got on the ball, I still heard the excitement, I still, especially when the first goal went in, I still heard encouragement. So then I don't like hearing from not only fans, maybe some people also in other forms of media saying that Jamaica needs to, or, or the coach needs to go, oh, or no. we need improvement. Calm down. That's all I'm saying. Calm down. <laughs> yeah, so, so I want to say I completely agree with you, right? If there is outright negativity, yes. because like you pointed out, I think this team has improved. In fact, at halftime, mm -hmm. even though we were down by two goals to nil, I thought that we would have come back to win the game. Because we, uh, we were obviously the better team yeah. throughout the game. Not draw the game, but I, I genuinely felt that we yes. would have come back to win the yes. game, Lance. As it turned out, we drew the game. Yeah. Um, but I agree with Lejay. The outright yeah. negativity is unwarranted. Yeah. And I hear things like um, the coach is not tactically astute. Again, even a lot of those things, I think it's too early for us to, mm. to get into, to, to start have, saying those things. Yeah, and, and I, I take uh, Leger's point because sometimes I, it's really frustrating to hear the fans talk almost as if they yeah. they are far superior Remember in tactical every, knowledge every, than, than the coaches. Yeah, every fan, which, which, every fan which quite feels, often is not. Every fan feels that they're pep enough. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. and, and the truth <laughs> is, um, too many fans feel that the Jamaican team is Manchester City and that miracles are going to be yes. created in a short space of time understand we were ranked what outside the top 60 or 70 in the world at one stage that means there are at least 70 countries in the world better than us and it does not mean that we're significantly better if at all than those who are ranked just below so yeah. it's a process it will take time yeah, and just before we wrap the segment just a quick comment on the high scoring games that we saw last night St. Vincent and the Grenadines 4-3 over Bermuda three goals from Olex Anderson uh, North Carolina League One player in the USL um, scoring prolifically there and got three goals last night and there was a, a close game between Guyana and uh, the Bahamas 3-2 there to the Guyanese the SVG result sending them to the top of their group so a lot of high scoring matches last night yeah and that's what that's what we like to see high scoring exciting football all across the Caribbean <laughs> and there you have it we take a break on the sports bank zone we'll go back with more <laughs> 